welcome to the Reloading Podcast here on the Firearms Radio Network. Presented by Patriot Patch Company and Camarado. How's everybody tonight? Doing good. Doing good. Real good. Nick Nick looks like he's ready to fall asleep. It's been a day. Actually, it's been a couple days. That's what you get for owning a Ford. No, that's not that. I have not had an issue with that truck until now. (laughs) That's what they all say. If you don't know what it's like, I remember the good old days, breaking down, laying down under it on the side of the road and fixing it. How's this? Yay! Yay. (sighs) Shred has been trying for the last 15 minutes to be able to get us to hear her. Oh, she, Sorry, the dogs. The dogs tonight. are looking for cheese. Okay. Even though I paid the cheese tax already. Ray, you back at home? Or are you still out this way? No, I'm out down in Georgia right now. Ew. Be back home Thursday night. Ah. Yeah, Jeff Daniels, yes, he the, the truck that he owns was found on the road dead. It did not get found on the road dead. I actually made it to the dealership, so. But he bought it. It was dead, okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> no? For, for Dick, found on road dead. I know what it stands for. I've known that my whole life. I've driven a Ford my whole life. I know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Now, for everybody uh, out there, I, my fuel pump went out yesterday. So, at uh, 55,000 miles? Wow. Yep. What a great fuel pump life. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> my truck has got 143,000 on it, and I've never had a fuel pump issue whatsoever. It's a GMC. But, you're lucky. Hey, that's why I bought extended warranty. So I'm, I was covered. <laughs> so in other words, people deal. don't call you up going, "Hey, we'd like to talk to you about your car's extended warranty." Correct. I don't have to do that because I own one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good God, Nick. Oh. Hmm. But yeah, Clifford's not wrong. It only really would run downhill yesterday driving home. <laughs> I was on. I was on the shoulder. Hazards on, foot to the floor, creeping up a hill. <laughs> I'm trying to do like the chug uh, and come like, come on, you can do it. Damn, I think I can. I think I can. Exactly. Also, the little engine is good. And then today, going to the shop, I was going as far as on the flattest ground I could, and there was a stop sign. I'm like, I'm not stopping. I'm doing a slow and go. So I slowly creep up and I look, nobody coming, just roll right through. Like if there's a cop here, I'm going to tell him, hey, officer, you can give me a ticket. Just can you push me with your push bar to the dealership? Then you can give me a ticket. (laughs) But Mm. no, but it'll it'll be fixed in the morning and back running before my trip out to central Kansas this weekend. Sounds like a long trip. It's about two hours to the event. Uh, reenactment? Yep. Just outside Emporia. There's some good pheasant hunting out there. There is. Mm-hmm. I, see, I, saw, I saw a pheasant flying all last year when I was out there. Uh-huh. Running with scissors. I've already done that. It's not a, not a problem at all. Changing the bumper lights, that's another issue. But anyway, so how are you doing tonight, everyone? Trenda, you, uh, you, we weren't, you weren't on the show last week, were you? No, I had uninvited, unexpected family drop by. Oh. oh. So what would you do in the last couple of weeks in guns reloading, hunting, and shooting? Uh, getting ready for muzzle loading. Um, my friend's husband is a, um, 
well, I mean, he's my friend too. He's a uh, competitive muzzle loader shooter, whatever you want to call him. And he also does the, uh, what's the event that muzzle loaders do where they, everything is like handmade leather, wild man, bush man, mountain man, mountain man. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah, so he's he's done quite a few of those, and he does some long range muzzle, loosely long range muzzle. Lo- so anyway, I'm having fun with him because I got a muzzle loader uh, for Christmas. So What'd me you get? And him, uh, an inline, and I forgot the model number. No, see, so you got to get yourself one. You got to get yourself a different one. You need it. You need a true front stuffer. Oh, hang I on, want one, but it, baby steps. Baby step. So I got everything I need to get started on that. And then I'm going snagging this weekend. Didn't even know what the hell that was until I was asked, you want to go snagging? I'm like, sure. And then, you know, a couple of weeks go by and I'm like, what is snagging? So this is going to be fun. So. Spoon, Spoonbill? Yes. Oh, good. I do want one of those. Like I've shot his, he's got several and a shotgun. I would love to have a shotgun. Clay. See, I had a I had a double barrel, uh, a side by side, but I never mm-hmm. shot it. So, um, I actually took my two uh, cap and ball pistols and my uh, side by side, and uh, gave them to the Cub Scouts. Uh, I mean, not all, but um, uh, yeah, but just just that I got doctor's crap and got. A, I'm getting ready to move here this summer too, and. Getting my bowl crap together, and it's warmer now, so the greedy creedy is about to come out. Mm-hmm. Randy, you can live next to Nick. His house next door is for sale. Yeah, I'm not buying a house. <laughs> I'm not even sure I want to continue to stay in Kansas City that long, so I'll just rent. That's why I live out here in Bonner. You don't feel like you're in Kansas City. Yeah. I'll tell you this, Dad. When he comes over, he'll leave the front door unlocked for days. I mean, and it's it's a it's a journey to get out there to steal. <laughs> I mean, it is. Oh. And got lots of lots of lady muckery getting ready to happen. It's been. I mean, we we have lots of events coming up with wilderness, but there's been a lot of ladies that, which I am actually happy to hear this a lot of ladies just hey what you know just random what are you guys doing this weekend do y'all want to go uh camp uh do, do y'all want to go fish um do y'all want to go hiking i'm loving it like the connections are great and then i'm planning to do a uh since whitetail season is over and pheasant season is over i'm planning to do a, a ladies night gun cleaning class um, just you know, just stuff that needs to be done that isn't. Ah, oh, these kids! I keep telling them don't run across my yard past a certain angle. Um, just, just getting it together. That's all. You got all the chemicals there to gun for a gun cleaning class. Always got chemicals. One thing I'll have is chemicals and clean guns. Things to skin things and ways to make coffee. <laughs> I, I, and I saw you learn how to bait cast too now. Um, it yes, it's not. It doesn't look unprofessional, but I definitely need to work on getting some some, some distance Wrist out there. Right? Yeah, see, I well, have a dream. I have this. Can you cast dream. without a bird's nest? Yes. So you, that's a success. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. That's better than I can do. I, I have three, um, and they all sit and collect dust because I cannot cast without a bird's nest. So, yeah, the big, I had fun. The big trick, the big one is can you, uh, like jig and you can you do the and then without the bird's nest? Are, are you, you kidding me? No, we're, we're walking, I, we're crawling before we're walking here. If you want to, if you want to learn, I could teach you on all but, that. Well, it's been a I while, got, but I need to get out and try it myself and get back fishing on fishing trip. I have a bait cast on borrow. Like, I hope they know they probably they're not getting it back anytime soon because I gotta practice. But um, my goal with bait casting is since I don't have a dog, when I go waterfowl hunting, 
I want to be able to pay cash out there and get my duck. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I I am certain it can be done. So yeah, that's what I'm interested in bait casting. And don't trouble hook or work. Don't forget to wait. Yeah. So well, we'll she's she's gonna learn that when she goes spoonbill fishing. We're snagging, so yeah. She's got a big big lead weight on a on a yeah. uh, on a tr big treble hook, and you just which is kind of weird because it's a it's a clinic we're taking through the Missouri Department of Conservation, and it's it's just weird when I go to things and they tell me I don't have to bring any gear or equipment, and I'm my eye is twitching because I feel like I got to take stuff and. Now the oh, now yeah. the question with the training from the state did they teach you the best way to know if your gearing ratio set up correctly or your um, spindle we'll, set up correctly? We'll learn all that Saturday. Gotcha. Let me know if they teach you that. If not, it's easy enough to teach you. Okay, because we got classroom in the morning and then we're going out on a boat in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. My guess they they'll teach you. It's pretty useful information that ninety. If you're going to use a bait caster, mm -hmm. you need oh. to know. Nick, enjoy your time getting your house together. It's warmer now. I'm about to get on your nerve. <laughs> I need to shoot. I'm about to get on your nerve. <laughs> I'm going to be working up loads here soon, so I need a place to go shoot. Yeah, me too. I need to get a member, an indoor membership, so I can go Corunda. whenever. Yes. I, yes. I remember a little trick I used to do when I was a young boy, learning how to cast uh, cast reel. Mm -hmm. If you could find some places like 100 yards, Put a ton of heavy weight on the end of your line and your bait cast, and start practicing that way. Just with a just with a dead lead weight, no nothing else. Yeah, the only and I was doing that when I was uh, practicing fly fishing. It's just that when the winter time gets here, that it gets too dark too soon. So now that it's lighter longer, y'all don't hardly see me indoors. Good. Hey, uh, yeah. Jim. Sir. How do you remember back that far? I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew that was coming. And I didn't realize they had fishing reels back then. I thought it was just a cane pole. A stick and some, some twine. I'm going to tell you what, you sack of beans. I have used a <laughs> cotton line, a single, single eye fishing hook, and a stick. When I was a little boy, I really did use it. String and a stick. <laughs> oh, there, shithead. I can't tell you how many bluegill I've thrown on a cane pole. Oh, my goodness. Cane poles are yeah. awesome. Get the oh, nice, absolutely. really long ones, like the, the nice uh, 16, 18 footers, and you just stand on the bank and you reach out. Beep, beep. I or couldn't carry dock. a pole that big when I was that little, when I was little like that. Mike, you're freaking crazy. Knock, knock, go ahead. Anyway. <laughs> Ray, over to you. Do you do anything? Just not really. Traveled for work, left uh, Sunday morning really early. Uh, and I think I'd stop at uh, CMP Talladega Park on the way down there to CMP and see if they any new uh, nice new threes. I'm kind of looking for a Mark One. Didn't have any Mark Ones. They had some 1970s and some Grands. Nothing I had to have. So. But it's really nice facility if you've never been there in, in Talladega. Range is just beautiful. I've been think I've been thinking about buying picking up a, a M1 M1 Grand from a, a CMP since I'm legally registered. The only thing is I have to do some competition. Well, you're a veteran, right? Yes, sir. Oh, that's right. I don't have to do all that. Nope. Just have your DD two fourteen. DD two fourteen. That and you can join the group if you're not. I don't know if your San Lee Gun Club is a CMP affiliated club. If not, you can join the Grand Collect Association and you're good. Uh, so I see a CMP affiliate to the North Carolina Rifle and Pistol Association. There you go. So I'm CMP I certified already. I recommend as close as you are, Jim, just drive down to Talladega. You got where you can pick out your own rifle and go gauge it for you. That's the wow. way to do it. Oh, yeah. You give them your driver's license. They'll give you the muzzle gauge and throat gauge, and you can go through and gauge each muzzle. And even though they have it on the card, but it's still, 
then you can yeah. actually like pick up which okay this one's got a nice stock it's hey it's got some maybe some tiger striping it's got a nice serial number or even it's an international harvester versus springfield and stuff like that you walk out that day with yep and you walk mm -hmm. out that day you get to go shoot it there at the talladega park yeah so they have you rascals got, got it got, got this down pat oh yeah we used to go to ohio dad and i used to make like day trips every so often we would go to ohio get up the over dark early drive over to camp perry ohio go to cmp find a grand maybe oh, you you'd be interested in then the best part about up in Port Clinton, Ohio, what's it called? Jolly Rogers? Jolly Rogers. Jolly Rogers, the best yellow perch I've ever had. <laughs> Phenomenal. I hate perch. you guys. I really do. And then we would I'm drive so back. Jealous. Nice thing about it, anybody out there can buy one as long as you go through a certain step process and they ship the rifle right to your front door. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing about the CMP. Yeah, because um... – yeah, I will be sure and take my TD214 to the CMP. You can act, you probably even call them and have them set up over the phone. You can probably email it to them and they can probably set it up over the phone. You can do it right there. It's, it's but yeah, if you're going, yeah. Yep. Go there so you wow. can shoot at that range. That exactly. range is gorgeous. I've heard Talladega. He, Dad saw it for the first time when he was down there. I've heard nothing but amazing stuff about it. They bought, I think, 2,000 acres to build this thing or something like that. It's Something just, crazy it's, now. It's, it's State of the art. You have well, the, the cameras. Yeah, the targeting system, it shows you your, your impacts almost instantaneously. I think with velocity, I think, if I remember right. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Mm. It's really nice. Wow. That was not well, that was the only thing I did last week. Uh, the last uh, seven days, I did some more digging on my workbench, trying to dig that thing, poor thing off from the load that it was it was carrying all the junk and crap to try. I'm going back to the reloading, guys. I'm going to put up. I got the uh, the force to press set out. The only thing I haven't done is bolted onto the bench, and I'm not going to do that until the bench is clear and ready. Okay, good. Over to you, Mr. Nelson. Over to you, bud. To me, uh, I've just been visiting uh, uh, electricians and plumbers. Are you in Indiana or are you in, in Illinois? I'm in Illinois right now, visiting electricians uh. and plumbers. <laughs> so... They, they How about you, Mike? Are you, you, you part of this... Part of this Organization of Heathens. What organization of Heathens? The Reloading Podcast host. We're not Heathens. And those heathens, and those Heathens out there on the screen keep putting all kinds of words up there that I can't really read. Hey, not, I'm not a not heathen. I'm riffraff. I am riffraff <laughs> and mayhem. <laughs> I love you both. I love them both. You can be a heathen if you want. I'm not. Oh, uh, the heathens are too close to being pagans. So I'm, not, I'm damn sure no pagan. Aren't you worshiping those uh, those uh, stone tablets that you have for your reloading data? And uh, anointing well, the and, 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 and anointing them with uh, alox. I need to turn my camera on so you can see that bird is flying. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can see a bird flying past your nose, Mister 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 Nelson. This is no fair, guys. They're picking on me because I can't put my camera on. Otherwise, you, if I do, you'll be looking at my sciences. So there's see still plenty I mean? of there's there's rack grades still, but there's no rack plus. There's no field. There's no service. Uh, there are some expert grades. What's the prices on those, Mike? Do you have any idea on a on the rifle? Uh, you said field grade rack rifle, seven hundred. And the expert, field, the expert, expert grade, grade or eleven fifty. That's still Ooh. cheap. And I recommend the expert um, because it comes with a brand new barrel, and I believe a brand new 
stock, if I'm not mistaken. New, new stock. And they also have uh, 308s. Yep. You don't want a 308. I was no. actually going to buy a 308. My dad was going to pick it up for me while he was down there. The reason well. why, you'll understand why. Uh, I, I'll use it for reenacting. And I can get 308 plastic blanks for nine cents compared to almost a dollar for 30 out six blanks. I, I understand all that, but it don't work. It don't do the action very well when you mm. shoot real bullets in it. The gun is designed for that long cartridge, and being that long cartridge slows the bolt down as it closes on. So there's a couple of different levels of expert. There's the Springfield or Harrington and Richardson, and then the, that was the 1150. <laughs> And then there's a expert grade uh, international harvester for fourteen fifty. Wow. The well, the one be there. The hard ones to find. But to give you an idea, Jim, the last two international harvesters we had come through Cabela's were yeah. twenty nine fifty a piece. Say again. Twenty nine fifty. Three thousand dollars for a new one grand. Yep. Okay. Yeah. For an international harvester. Okay. They're not well, quite the you. singer of 1911s, but they're on the rarer side. Yeah. But the expert grades feature a new commercial production stock and a new commercial production barrel. So. Hey, Nick and Ray, what did they put on those rifles for sling? Leather or fabric? Uh, early or no early leather. Uh, once we got into war, so probably say 42, 43, they would have went to the canvas. Very good, thank you. That's the old that's double hole 1907. Correct, they were, yep. were they using the old double double row holes? What is 19, 1911, 1913? Start, I think, 07. I think it was 07 is should be correct. Yep, so I believe it was 42 okay. to 43 is when. Right before the invasion is when they went, I think, flipped over to all canvas. There's a lot of photos you see okay. from, like, D-Day. They were running canvas slings. Very good. Thank you, guys. I think paratroopers would have stolen leather. To this so. day, when I, buy a rifle, when I buy a rifle and it has rifle slings on it, I put a 1907 sling on it. It's still, I can say, one of the best slings out there ever produced. You damn, you damn skippy, Nick. And if you take it... Take an apple seed class, you will uh, absolutely want to have that sling on your rifle because you'll know how to use it properly. Yep. Well, even with the canvas slings that they had, you can shoot. You, they're not as good as the 07s, but like when I used to shoot CMP matches, it worked. It just is, it doesn't get as tight as your 07 leather sling would. Mine is canvas, but I, mine's also embroidered with Reloading Podcast on it. But so. I think I have an extra line around do it now. So yeah, if I if I get some money, I want to make a road trip to Camp Perry. I'd like to go to Talladega and then combine that with you know the nap car race. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, go to, I, go to, I, but you gotta do that in a certain order. Because if you're gonna stay on the infield of Talladega, you don't want a gun in your vehicle. <laughs> yeah, I know. And they're right there, they're only three miles apart. Yeah. yeah. So, I thought that name Talladega was familiar. Yep, that's where Talladega oh, Super Speedway is. Right. So, I'll be at NASCAR races in less than a month. That's 10 oh, minutes from my house, Kansas. <laughs> yeah, how much is that costing? We looked uh, the other day, I can get tickets about middle of the track, about middle of the way up for about 45 bucks. That's not bad at all. No, not bad. That's the weird thing about NASCAR. It's completely different from every other sport. The higher up you go, the more expensive the tickets get. Mm -hmm. The lower you get, the cheaper the tickets. It's completely flipped from every other sport. Calm yes, down, Mike. Is. You can sit in Nick's house. Yeah, I got uh, a bedroom. I I I already uh, have conversational issues with the wife and me taking trips without her. We're going to Dallas. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Dallas, Grinnell, yeah. Iowa. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. If I try and sneak oh. in a Kansas race, 
I'm gonna. I might. I'm for sure going here just to see the cup. I'm not going to the truck series on Friday night or Saturday. But the big one is gonna be all in September. I'm gonna go for sure Saturday and Sunday because uh, in the Xfinity race on Saturday, a uh, guy from back home races in the Xfinity, so I would love to get like pit passes for that. And so. Well, my goal is the weekend of my birthday is a two-day show in uh, Milwaukee for Indy. And I want to be at both of those. Wait, are they at the mile? Uh Uh-huh. Indy's coming back to the mile. Yes. Interesting. Saturday and Sunday. Damn. Yeah. That'd be good to see. Uh Uh-huh. With how flat See, it is, and mm. oh man, they fly around that place. Um, when is that? I gotta get tickets yet. I try to talk to kids into getting me tickets, but they're cheap. So, so Sharenda, you talking about hearing protection for races? The cool part about like NASCAR races, mm-hmm. you can get them where you can hear the drivers. And just literally them dropping like f bombs, and mm-hmm. that's the, that's the coolest part about it, I think. Yeah, <laughs> Racing electronics, the, uh, baby. I didn't. Oh, yeah. I went to uh, the Indy 500 a few years ago. No, I'm jealous. Okay, it yeah, was, you got to go to the Grand Yetta Mall. Yeah, <laughs> it jealous. was it was my first experience, and oh my gosh, we had a long walk from the parking lot to oh, yeah. the uh, track. But it was, I would do it again. It was. That's pretty freaking cool. That's on every racing fan's bucket list. Yeah, my uh, my brother and uh, sister in law took me here. I had a. It was yeah. It's Labor Day weekend. I, is the back to back. Yeah. Before yep. you came along, Nick, I used to go over for qualifying. And I know you did. And you know, Labor Day. We talked about going there for years, but it never worked out. <sighs> Before it, when you came along. Yeah. <laughs> Classic did, parent line. I did a lot of stuff before Nick came along. Yep. Yeah, you drove your car like every day. Now I'm getting to a point I can start before and do things again. Funny. <laughs> you funny. <laughs> Nick, I got to say, I think they beat you up today more than they usually do me. It's been a crazy day. A crazy 24 hours. Somebody's got to pick on you. Might as well be us. And that's why I had, to throw a little bit of, I had to throw a little bit of alcohol in the drink tonight. We all got to take our turn. Yep. Hey, at least I get to go camping. Tonight we have. And it's not going to rain this week, and that's all that matters. And I get to go play Cowboys and Indians on like 1,200 acres. You don't have to rub it in. Oh yeah, I keep. I'm gonna rub it in all weekend. You all know week. so. Get him, Sharonda. You got some good stuff for on the on my boy. Yeah. Are you gonna be able to take pictures while you out there? Oh yeah, there, it's no public. It's all private, okay. green actors only. So I'll definitely get pictures. So they gotta go see Lucas next week. Uh, my Lucas. Yeah, our Luke. Well, our Lucas. No, 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 no. We both know him. My, so. He was my Lucas first. <laughs> That's true. It is yours first. At least Rocco hasn't got me here recently. Ugh. We got hey guys, we have a reloading question on screen. Do any of you guys, any of you folks, have any experience with Lee inline? Bullock Peter. He just got himself a Lee auto index and four hole turret and thinking about getting it, but he doesn't know how well it will work. Thank you, Quad Father. Probably for Foxtrot Papa Victor. If that's the same press we have, Dad, I don't know if that fits on it, but I've never messed with it. Go ahead, Greg. My My buddy Greg has got one. Yeah. Like, but the only bad thing about being on the lead turret 
that thing is going to spin and jerk every time, and I'm not sure. But I do. They do work. I just on that press, I don't know. Yeah, I know they work on their what do they call it? The Pro One Thousand okay. is what those are designed for most of the time. But it doesn't mean it might not fit on the the four hole turret if it's the one. Yeah, if it's one that we have, the turret head moves and not your shell plate. Right. So like, like my dad says, it's it's going to wobble that tube system quite a bit. Um, look at Hornady and RCBS for their bullet feeding dies and tubes. Yeah. Uh, Hornady sells aluminum tubes for it and their uh, die system, and it's adjustable. So um, pistol bullets only. So, and if you want anything better than that, you have to go to the um, Mr. Bullet Feeder. Mm -hmm. I've used mine on my Pro 1000. Or my Loadmaster, and it works pretty good. Is that uh, what I'm thinking of is the four-hole? Is the Loadmaster? I think it is. I can't remember. No, Loadmaster is five. Five? Okay. The 1,000 is a four. That's it. Yep. And it's garbage. Mm -mm. Well, didn't they redo the, low, the Pro 1,000? Maybe. I thought they did. But uh, the four-hole turret uh, you can auto-index with, so... Um, it should be pretty good on there. Um, it's, I mean, it's like everything else on Lee with their stuff is getting it set right. Yeah. Well, another thing he could do, call Dennis up at Titan. Guaranteed yeah. Dennis has played with it. Yep. Dennis has played with about anything you could think of as far as Lee products and mm -hmm. try to make things work. We have a first timer on the show. Can I bring him up, Mike? Yeah. Christopher Sullivan, welcome to the Reloading Podcast. Oh, he's a uh, first time he actually... first time Go making ahead, the show, but yeah, he's a uh, he's a regular in uh, uh, Discord. Ah. Uh, okay. Well, welcome anyway. Mm-hmm. <sighs> do, 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 do. Anyway, I believe we had a ball on that box we took drink trifle with tonight, didn't we, Mike? What? Didn't we have some reloading to do tonight? No, we have some conversation to do about. So, uh, what we're looking at is what's the difference between. Um, your your basic straight wall versus your um, <clears throat> basic uh, bottleneck. What, what's some of the equipment we're going to need that we didn't need for straight wall? Mm. Start there. Case trimmer, number one. Number one is the case trimmer. Number yeah. two, Calip calipers to measure them too. Yep. And we 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 had that with uh, uh, basic uh, reloading. You need a set of calipers. Um, you're going to need a uh, a lube. Uh, you know, uh, just a case lube. You, there's no such thing as no no lube dies in uh, bottleneck cases. Um, you have to understand your die sets are going to be two die sets um, to start with. 
you're going to have a sizing die and a seating die. Um, your scale is still going to be, uh, you know. Gracie, you're fine. Uh, a, a good scale. Um, your um, loading blocks oh, will be no. a little... Good, Paul. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. What do you got? I was just going to say, you mentioned lubrication, but you didn't say, think, say anything about the lubrication pad that most RCBS kits sell, sell or include. Okay, we got lubrication pads. Uh, a lot of people don't like to use. So we're just going to name lubrication equipment, all right? All right. Yeah. yeah. The idea is see. we are being general tonight, not specific. Right. Um, case trimmer, lubrication, two die set. Uh, shell holders, um, scale, check weight. Again, we're going to need a press. We're going to need a press. Yeah, we're going to need a press. I know. Um, I know. I know it goes we don't need saying, a different we press. Are going... Nope, we don't. So the idea is, Jim, we're talking about stuff that is different that we would need that's different from the the straight wall. Um, so that's what we're looking for. There's stuff that's di we need that's different from straight wall. Set of check weights. You're going to need uh... well, not. we're going to need potentially different primers and powder. True. Yep. You're going to need different primers and powder. Yeah. Good call, Ray. Um, what else? Basic if we get too carried away. I think. Well, no, depending on if you're doing cast, you're gonna need a, a expander yeah. die. I know yeah. most most of your kits come with that on your pistol dies or your, some of your straight walls, but if you're doing bottleneck, not necessarily bottlenecks come with those. So. But, um, yeah, that pretty much covers what we need. I mean, there's not a whole lot of extra equipment that you're that you're adding on. It just, like I say, uh, you, you know, your your die set is going to be a two die set instead of a three die set. Um, you're going to need different powders and primers. Um, you're going to have to have a case trimmer. Um, you're going to have to have a reloading book that covers the uh, cartridges that, that you're going to reload. Mm -hmm. So you can get the information of what ca maximum case length is and minimum trim to length. Um, you know, stuff along that line it would cover you pretty well. Um, uh, may uh, Most likely you're going to want a powder dispenser, um, either a, um, uh, a drum type or electronic, uh, just so you can throw with a, with theoretically, a drum type. Theoretically, we'd have that. That, that would be a, a same thing that we'd have for okay. a straight wall. We didn't set one up. That's all. When we, when we did it, we trickled in with, uh, yeah. The uh, trickler. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Um, Pan Jockey just had one, a chamfer and deburring tool, if we don't have one already. Yeah. Most, most straight walls don't need those, really. There you go. That's, I mean, that's the basics. Yeah. Right there. There isn't, uh, after we, after we get into that, then we start really um, stepping into uh, my world. You know, I'm a little embarrassed to say when I started out in my 20s, I bet you I went 
four or five years reloading before I bought a trimmer. It got to a point cases wouldn't fit in the chamber because of the length, so I was forced to get a trimmer. Okay, and uh, were you were measuring when you know how long the cases were? Yeah, and I could see them grow, and it got to a point. It forced my hand; I had to go get a trimmer. Okay. Um, reason for the trimmer is because uh, it gets too long. You're going to have a hard time chambering the uh, cartridge into the into the uh, chamber. And you can cause all kinds of high uh, high pressures that uh, could cause a gun to go kaboom with it. Yeah. So, yeah, trimmer is definitely needed. All right, so lubrication of equipment, check weights, different primers, different powder, possibly different press, case trimmer, chamfer to burr tools, calipers, possibly a different powder dispenser. Bama Dad, a case neck indicator. I don't know if we if we need a uh a shoulder uh, bump gauge or anything like that right off the top. Um, yeah, probably not for basic. Yeah. If you stick with brand name off the shelf cases, you're probably not going to need a military crimp remover, but depending on what cases you get, you may want one of those. And what, and what caliber you're loading for. I uh, definitely think that's an important thing because, uh, you know, if we're loading for a lot of surplus stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 223, 308, you're definitely probably going to want. And uh, pan jockey, uh, yes, a stuck case remover. I don't need one. I know you don't. The, the Relo Reloading Podcast crew here does not need a, a stuck case remover. Hey, you I better do. not put everybody else in that mess. I do. I don't want, I don't want anybody <laughs> cursed, all right? Just because we, I used a hammer and still couldn't get a friggin' case stuck. We cleaned a, a, a reloading die, size die out with a brake cleaner mm -hmm. and no lube Twice. on the case. No lube on the case. And proceeded to with a a, a a Lee press cast press size the the case and return the handle without any problem. So the reloading podcast uh, does not need a uh, stuck. Everybody else out there want one. So the funniest Only thing about that is night. I have tried a couple of times on this show to get cases stuck and have not succeeded. So, I mean, that's kind of the funny thing about that. Now, Jim, you've gotten a couple stuck, haven't you? Unfortunately. I've gotten, I've gotten as many as seven stuck in one night using that Lee White Lube. But the minute right. I switched over to pure lanolin, I haven't had a stuck case since. And I'm talking about machine gun brush machine gun brass resizing yep. it down to uh, semi stucks somebody had a question about that the other day they were making um so bullet puller clifford yeah i added that to the list and i was going to talk about it after we're done talking about this um uh somebody in the discord chat i think was looking at using the um the lanolin lube that Jim's talking about, uh, it's what ninety ten or eighty eight twelve. No, uh, no neither. It, it, I'm using it, straight pure lanolin. Oh, you're just using the straight liquid lanolin. No, uh, not liquid lanolin. Based. This is this is like butter. It's, it comes directly from lanolin. Oh. It's okay. It's, it's pharmaceutical grade. 
what, what I'm looking for. 100 right. so it, pure So lemon. you spread it on like you would uh, Imperial Sizing Wax, essentially. Yes, exactly. Okay. The easy way to do it, though, if you have a big tumbler, you can take a, uh, a soft cloth, smear it on, put it in a tumbler, let it tumble for 15 minutes. It'll get all the cases ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, used to do that with my uh, Big Dylan uh, to reload 308s. We would run seven or eight tumblerfuls of 308 brass and in the in the lanolin and go from there works so bama dad says i watched someone on his podcast stick cases on an area 419 press two times with reading dies just last week <laughs> i guess he should be watching the reloading podcast on how to not get cases stuck that's right <laughs> um, Good one, bama dad. that was awesome pan jockey says nipple cream uh, probably not. Actually, it is good for for uh, dairy cow dairy nipples. I was going to anyway, say, um, bag bomb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bag bomb. Yeah. Um, uh, quad father brought up the, the, the good point. What you were talking about the ninety ten. I believe it's ninety percent alcohol, ten percent lanolin, Mike. Yeah, some people mix it eighty eight percent lanolin, twelve percent alcohol, but. Um, uh, Pan Jackie said lanolins used for breastfeeding mothers. Yes. Um, I thought it was for breastfeeding babies. Gotcha. Well, I, I think, think y'all just want to say breast. <laughs> Jim just wanted to say breast. He did. <laughs> anyway. Yes, this is. I had to mute myself. Sorry. <laughs> you know, it just goes to prove no matter how old we get, we refuse to grow up. Friends will be boys. You freaking A right. I feel guilty to that shit right now. Mm. Sorry, I, I have a uh, I have a meme that I'll post on Discord and uh, in the reloading podcast chat later. But I'm not talking about it here. So um so yeah lanolin it's nipple cream so that's where the comment came from but anyway um so uh one of the listeners was mentioning that he added lanolin and alcohol together but it uh, the lanolin curdled up and it didn't really mix my understanding you basically you kind of you have to like do an emulsion mix like you're trying to mix up a shake or something like that you really got to whip it pretty good Jason used that mixture for a while, but without you, but without getting Devo involved, right? So, throw it in your blender, or I don't know, uh, but you got to stir it up really well, I guess. I've not used it because I have imperial sizing, imperial sizing mark. Yeah, because Which alcohol will own... dissolve what. Oil, light oils, and lanolin, mm -hmm. pure lanolin is definitely not a light oil. So, um, alcohol percentage is real important. Yeah, uh, you don't want you Absolutely. don't want to go any lighter than ten percent, and you don't want to go any heavier than twelve percent. Otherwise, bad things happen. As one listener tried to do an eighty percent, twenty percent, and it didn't work out. So, um. But yeah, when we go to bottleneck, the biggest and most important thing that you can focus on is lubrication of your cases, kids. Mm -hmm. So, but at the same time, there is a there is such a thing as a lube dent, and you you, you don't want to over -lubri overly lubricate your case. Correct. The too little is a bad thing. Too much is a bad thing. Looks like Nick, Nick showed something out there. There's an example one right there. So that's an extreme oh. lube dent. Oh yeah, that that's like worst that's case scenario. Little, isn't that a case case next split, uh, Nick? No, case next good on it. Everything's good. That's it's just, just a lube dent. You're forming it's it. Now. Cold. Cold. Yeah. So I got I got plenty of examples of that. Mm -hmm. So you're forming Martini Henry brass. It's common to get that if you don't use just the right amount. Like here's one. 
for when I did some Snyder. This might actually fire form out, but yeah, that's a little okay. That's a crease. It looks like a looks like a neck split. Yeah, that one yeah. might fire form out, but yeah, this uh, one you ain't getting this one out probably. No, so. no, that, you're not. But yeah, that one. The only way that's coming out is if it actually splits the case. Exactly. So. We've got um, that process figured out, though, don't we, Nick? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's practice. So it is. It just when you're loading these two cartridges, it takes tons and tons of practice. So, so running with scissors says uh, 99% medical alcohol and liquid lanolin all the time. He he does it on a nine to one basis. So ninety ten. Um, but yeah, that's the thing is you got to have that high alcohol content. So a lot of people go ahead. A lot of people buy ISO heat. So, yeah, you can't use the, you know, 80% alcohol you get or 86% alcohol you get in the, in the, uh, the store and expect it to work. Um, correct. Uh, ISO heat works. Um, denatured alcohol works. Does it matter yep. if it's the yellow or the red bottle? Yes. Don't get the yellow. Red bottle. The red bottle. I just realized I have access to gallons of industrial strength alcohol. That's the problem. Road trip. Mm-hmm. Gallons. Nice. <clears throat> as long as it's at 99%, you're good. Um, that's why I kind of, I've always gone with denatured alcohol because it is 100% alcohol. Mm-hmm. Yep. No water. Out of it. You can buy that cheap at the farm store too. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, where's that Nick? All uh, right. At the like, farm uh, store, like tractor supply, farm and fleet, fleet uh, farm. Be back in your painting of... section. Yep, there's a lot of stuff you're reloading. You can buy at farm stores. Yep, pet stores. Whole... Yep, pet stores. Yep, that could be a whole podcast right there. Could be. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other thing is um, brass cleaning pistols. We don't care. Our bottlenecks, we do. So we'll dive heavily into that too. That can be done a number of ways. Right. Yeah. We'll dive into that later. So, yeah. Um, here's, here's one real quick. So, for everybody that uh, is, would be going from, like, say, pistol to uh, bottleneck rifle, what's, what's everybody's thoughts on this one? The Dylan Case Lube. That is exactly what we're talking about. Yep. Yeah. So, just generic. You're, you're, you're buying it pre mixed. Yeah. Yeah. You're just, you're just paying for the name. Um, Clifford Zach, I never used it, but will one shot work on bottleneck cases? And Jeff Daniels answered before I could ask the question here. Sure will. Let it dry. Yes, absolutely. That is the problem people make with one shot. Hornaday one shot is they do not let it dry. They spray it and then try and ram it in a case. <laughs> and guess what happens? They get cases stuck and then complain because one they say one shot's garbage. Never tried it, but I've read it I'm online. On, um, I was on can number three, and as we previously discussed, I've never stuck a case. So obviously, I've read accounts of people using Pam cooking spray case loop. I believe it. I've never, never tried it, but I mean, if you clean it out afterwards, you'd be fine. Yeah. But the thing I would worry about would be degradation of powder. Yeah, I agree. But I mean, if well, you're cleaning I, it, I, I mean, uh, which one do you use? Do you use the butter flavored, or do you use the olive oil, or you know, the standard? I, you know, which well, one in you a, in a, if you're loading the Carcano, oil? you use the the olive oil one. If it's uh, oh, yeah. Okay. oh yeah, yeah, you gotta if get it's that American, American. It's better, you know, <laughs> just yeah. like cheese. If Using you're loading, Pam's case lube is mission specific. If we're oh, loading okay. six five Carcano, use that extra virgin olive oil from Italia. Gotta get some oh. Frank Sinatra playing in the background. No, oh, no, you God. gotta go Dean Martin. There you go, Dean Martin. 
just want to clear that up so we, we get the right one. Oh my goodness. Oh, butter all the way. Oh no. <laughs> bottom. I don't want to know what a inside That'd be of the die would be. That would be. It would be. I don't even want to know what the inside of the dye would look like after if you did butter. <laughs> hmm, where's my worst quality dyes? Where's my mute button for Nick? <laughs> yeah, so we can uh, we can mix up our uh, our own lube by uh, um, Hornady One Shot or Dylan or any of the other ones that are out there that uh, are basically lanolin and alcohol type uh, product, um, and then we have the factory case lubes of uh, imperial sizing wax uh, rcbs case lube too um some of those are pretty nasty especially that rcbs uh case lube yeah uh, the two that i will never use and i mean never is lee and rcbs never mm -hmm. Started out on RCBS and wound up on Lee and quit using both. I mean, you get. I bought that. That was the first thing I got with my was with mine was uh, RCBS case lube one and a and a white pad, and uh, with a green plastic cover, and you sit down and yeah, put some of that on, and you'd roll the case on there. And it didn't matter how much time you rolled it back and forth. It never was enough on it. it. it either it never got enough on there or was too much. And yep. it never failed that if you, there was one kernel of powder that got stray, it got onto that pad. One kernel of walnut media, it got mm -hmm. onto that pad. And it stuck to your case. Yep. So 15 minutes after you started and lubed that pad up, it was dirty. And uh, so I've got two things that I, we're, we're going to kind of put an end to this here. Um, I've got two things I want to cover before we're done tonight. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking to, oh, cricky. Um gentleman from florida oh the rusty rusty dies yes um so we somebody else shared in um discord about a, a better one to use to clean up those dies if you've got a vibratory tumbler with corn cob or or walnut media Toss it in there. Yeah. These dies were friggin' shiny. So. And second, in honor of the fact that Chris Sullivan joined us for the uh, first time ever live, he sent me an email. He said, first, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Chris, and I'm a Reloadaholic. Welcome, Chris. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Welcome, Chris. Hi, Hi Chris. Chris. I've been listening to the podcast for some time now, and all I can say is thank you for all you do. Thank uh, you, we're not responsible life. for any mental anguish that you've suffered as a result of listening to the podcast. We I've have, learned so much. We have counselors uh, for for people who listen. Uh, we do. Yeah, we do. I need their phone number. Yeah, they uh, counsel you. Number. They counsel you into spending more money. That's what they do. <laughs> I think it's the same counselors that uh, Sean uses for We Like Shooting. <laughs> hey, let's not confuse me with facts. Their 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 uh, instructions are to drink more. <laughs> It'll get better. <laughs> All right. So back to Chris's email. I've learned so much, so much information to take in. Yeah, we do spit out quite a bit. So 
Uh, currently, I'm reloading for 223, 9mm, 40, 308, 38 special, 270, and now just getting into 6.5 needs more. By the way, I hereby decree that we will never refer to it as 6.5 Creedmoor on this show again. It will always be 6.5 needs more in honor of Paul. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Here, here. I am getting into doing precision shooting. I was shooting a Savage 110 tactical with 24 inch heavy barrel with one and eight twist. Good start. Looking at brass on graphs. Instagram's disconnected. Instagram, you suck. Did they just log you out? Yeah, one hour, and that's all they allow. Yep. And we're just getting into the good part of the show. Well, no, I think the rest of it's been good, too, so. So, yay. So Bama Dad wants to know, do you guys think that it's worth the price difference to buy stainless steel dies? Paul, I say no. Stainless steel dies, depending upon the climate that you're dealing with, um, can be good. I mean, if you're reloading in, say, like Panama. Well, if you're reloading, yeah. if you're reloading in some basements, you know, um, or out in the garage someplace, and you don't have any climate control. Yeah, true. You can, you can, uh, you know, is it? Do I tell everybody to buy stainless steel dies? No, no, I don't. I mean, you know, but I do tell some people that if you're setting up a, a press that's only going to run um, pistol, say pistol, or only one caliber. Buy a stainless steel because you're going to leave it all set up. Um, you know, yep. that's it. Or else you have, like I do, and you have room where you can put everything in it. And, you know, you can get nitrated dyes, everything else. Stainless yeah. steel, I mean, um, at the cost of what dyes are nowadays um, for... Above above average dies. I don't mean you know run of the mill stuff. Um, yeah, go ahead with stainless steel if you if you can afford it. You know mm -hmm. if you can't, okay, no big deal. Um, there's just uh, some of the features that the stainless steel dies out there have are really nice. Um, you know, yeah, my micrometer adjustments uh, for seating. Uh, for headspace, for lots of things. So, yeah, go ahead. Bama Dad said eight months out of the year in Alabama, humidity is around 85%. Ellie Wilson gauges are hard to keep rust free. So that would be, you know, I guess, uh, I guess Alabama, probably Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi are probably oh, all high humidity states. So right. that would probably be a valid. We obviously know Florida is from, yeah. Um, I want to say Larry, but I can't yeah. remember, and I can't find the email at the current second. So, put them in a plastic container with desiccant, and that helps. Exactly. Yeah, but don't have the desiccant holding, you know, the touching the 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 die because it, it's just yeah. going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, how long is desiccant going to last in a uh, die type uh, yeah. reloading box? Right. Well, it can be it can be recharged, or it can be dried well, some out. Some of them can, yeah. Yeah. How the effect of recharging? So, yeah, the good, uh, the good uh, one can uh, You know, it's kind of the the same thing. But my question to you is, if you're 
if you're consistently loading in that type of condition where you have to worry about your dies rusting because of where they're sitting and your powders out there, uh, what are you sacrificing? Yeah. Well, you can do like I do, even in climate controlled conditions, you can sit down and say, I'm going to put my primers and my, and my powder in a, uh, 30 millimeter uh, ammo can okay mm -hmm. and i know that's sealed it's got a good rubber seal in it they don't they only use them one time uh they're expensive but they hold a lot so here's another option vacuum sealer mm. questionable if you get a good one that actually seals and, and vacuums out the air, then it, that might work. But Bama Dad said he I bought the say, rusties boxes, and so far they've held off the rust. So, well, Mike, I, I agree with you on the vacuum seal, but the thing is, you got to think in terms of long term storage because otherwise, you're going to be buying vacuum bags for that, uh, you know, every time you open a case, every time you open a bag. Well, you buy a, it comes on a long roll, and basically, what you do is you, um, like, Cut I've off got. What you need. So basically what I do is like when I buy a, a larger thing of shredded cheese, I'll actually make that vacuum bag longer and then mm -hmm. I can cut off the seal and reseal it five or six, seven, eight, nine times before that bag is no longer viable. So you can mm -hmm. do the same thing. Um, running with scissors said, can you wipe them down with mineral oil? a la fortune cookie 45. Yes. Um, Jeff Daniels said, would ballastol work on those gauges to keep rust off? I uh, imagine so. Don't use WD-40. <laughs> Fish oil. Nope. It's not a, it's not preservative. Um, it's penetrating oil, period. They make those green bags that they ship guns in. That are, they're called VC, VCI representative. You can get them small enough that are Ziploc. You can put case gauges in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, those are those are good and they're cheap and yeah. um, you know, uh, vacuum sealing. I'm sorry, but uh, the only vacuum sealers that I've ever seen that work really good are those chamber type vacuums, and they're expensive. So, um. Yeah, I don't know if the commercial ones like the Cabela's or, you know, the Food Saver or anything like that would work or not. So, yeah, it was oh. a thought to toss out there. Maybe somebody can try. I don't have enough humidity to be able to test it. And I have my place that is taken care of as far as humidity. I mean, I have uh, climate control 100 percent. So. And the way my debit card is set up. <laughs> yeah. Actually, my stuff hasn't done too bad. I don't, my whole house is in climate control, but the two areas that I keep my uh, reload and stuff sorted, I have dehumidifiers running 24 seven in there. Yeah, you could definitely use a uh, ballast uh, How long it would stay on, I don't know. That would be the, so, um, and it's the bags you get too. If you buy crappy bags, that's the biggest problem because the bags don't have the correct design to be able to suck all the air out. So, but yeah, um, you know, whether, whether it's a practical option or not, I don't know. I mean, if you've got, you know, dyes that you're only using once a year, possibly. So. Um, quad father 504 FPV said, uh, use containers from the dollar store with the snaps on the lids and it seems to keep the moisture out. So basically kind of the, uh, rub and raid style. Yeah. I, I, you know, stuff, you know, even your, your standard dye box, if you spray it down with a, uh, with, with a rust pre preventative, one of the wax type ones, you just have to remember to clean it before you use it again. That's all. Um, the other thing is, is when you open up your, your die box 
and you see a, a little piece of paper that's sitting in there about this size, don't throw it out. Why do you ask? Because that's usually the factory desiccant paper. So now see, Lyman does not cheapen out and they have a bigger one. So isn't that paper laid lace with the ballastol? Say what? Isn't the piece of paper you're talking about in the die box? I have mine. But aren't those pieces of paper impregnated with ballastol? Um, this one is not. This one is Armor RVCO. Okay. So, some company, you know, somebody might. You can also get that. Uh, <clears throat> they got a VCI craft packaging paper. That's what the military used to wrap all their magazines and stuff in. Mm -hmm. That'd be actually so. pretty cheap. And yeah. uh, just a quick hint. I don't know how most how people are as far as how what their hands are and their pH of their hands and yep. that. But uh, rubber gloves. Um, mm -hmm. latex, I not not latex, but uh, nitrile. Yeah. Um, One of the guys that uh, works with me at Cabela's, um, when he touches guns, he has gloves on because he's one of those lucky people that uh, if he touches a gun, it will leave the fingerprint behind permanently. Mm -hmm. Or uh, rust, or rust. Some people have problems with rust on on it. Yeah. And it goes on to the it. it you know, onto the dye itself too. So think about even the brass handling the brass cases and everything. Sometimes, um, just well, it's a good way to keep your lead intake down, right? And and wearing nitrile gloves because you're going to handle your bar bullets, which probably have lead residue on them. Uh, if it's once fired brass, it's probably going to have lead residue on them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <clears throat> excuse um, me. Um, so it'd be a good, good use of, you know, good reason to get gloves. Plus if you're using, you know, your Imperial sizing wax or you're using, you know, uh, some of the other lubes, you don't want to get that built up on your hands because mm -hmm. then you're spending, then your wife's going to find out your hands are greasy. She's going to hand you that bottle of Dawn <laughs> say, Hey bub, there's some dishes that need to be done. So by listening to me and the others and getting nitro gloves to load with, you can save yourself the potential of having to do a lot of dishes. And just a, a quickie, uh, buy uh, a, some white cotton gloves, okay, for putting on, uh, on imperial sizing wax. You put the, the nitro gloves on first, put the white glove on, dip. I thought you were going to say get the white cotton gloves for putting on the Ritz. Uh, no, for putting on the Imperial sizing wax. Because <laughs> that way one glove lasts a long time to keep. Correct. So. You know, so. Yep. Um, and. Uh, oh, good grief. How did he get power back? Oh, man. Dang it. Oh. Poor Paul, loud. <laughs> okay, so back to Chris Sullivan's questions. Uh, so he said he's getting a Savage 110 Tactical 24-inch heavy barrel with a 1-8 twist. He was looking at brass on graphs and noticed and Peterson brass comes in small rifle primer. I guess my first question would be, is that regular small rifle or small rifle magnum primers, and what's the difference? In all of my manuals and everywhere I've looked, I can't find information on what to use. They all say large rifle primers. Um, you can use small rifle primer brass in 6.5 Creedmoor without a problem using the standard loads that you're getting there um, with large rifle primers loads. Um, loads. Um, you can't necessarily do it with small magnums, though. Well, I mean, you can. Sometimes small magnums work better when it gets a little chilly out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, I'm just saying you can't blatantly yeah. use them. You have to do your homework. Yeah. So. Um, but, there, the, you know, that's investigation that you have to see how it's going to group with standard primers. 
Mm -hmm. Start with standard uh, small rifle primers and, you know, sometimes, uh, even in small cases, sometimes going to a magnum rifle primer uh, helps. Mm -hmm. uh, it just it just depends upon how the rifle's going to shoot. And that's up to each rifle. But, uh, yeah, not a problem as far as using uh, small rifle uh, primers uh, with a large rifle load. So... Okay, so he's also wondering if Sierra still does factory tours. Before my stepdad passed away, he was showing me the different components and bullet making that he got on a tour of the factory. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get that before he passed away because of his other children. Bummer. Uh, I would have loved to have had to put it in my collection if they still do tours and if there's anyone in the area <laughs> that could get it, I would gladly pay shipping. It's a little far for me to drive considering he's in West Virginia. He's in West by God, Virginia. It's not that far over to Missouri. Yay, West by God, Virginia. Hey, hell, buddy. How you doing, y'all? Uh, not sure well, if it's reloading related, but is there any way to do a show on what MOA is and how it's used? We've done one in the past. We can do it again uh, when we're done with the current stuff. Um, and uh, he said, thank you for uh, thank you all for what you do with the podcast. It's so helpful. Oh, wow. I see one like the... the the cups and stuff that they make cases out of? Or I out think of. so. Yeah. We may have a few extra of those, Nick. I know I've got some. Yeah. And I know what, Trina, do you remember what the guy said at SHOT Show? Oh, uh, I can't remember if they said they're going to start them back up. If not, I know, I don't know if I've, I don't think I've emailed him. I might email the guy. Which which one? The, um, Was it Sierra? No. Yeah, yeah Sierra. Um,. So. He didn't, but he did say that if we contact him, we could. Yeah, that's saying if we contact, we could probably work out a time to where we go over. I know, especially Shrinda, myself, my dad might even come over. We can probably do a tour of yep. there. Yep. He probably thought he's wanting to start that what, the academy or what well, was it called? What is it, the reloading? Yeah, the reloading roadshow. Roadshow, road yeah. Road show. yeah. yeah. But I may have some of those components. I, I know they're redoing the website right now, and they're they were closed when the factory outlet was closed. So it looks like they're going to be doing a uh, revamp on the site here soon. Yeah. If not already. Yeah, March. They were closed March twenty eighth to April first for inventory. So. I could never work at a place like that. I would never have a paycheck. Have you, have you ever been to the outlet store, Sharinda? Nope, I have not. Oh, we'll have to go sometime. Bet. Because there's a whole like price list you can look at, and it's by pound. And there's say there's roughly 35 bullets per pound. It's like half the price. Seriously? Yeah. Ah. It, it depends on the projectile. Like, for instance, I'm looking at... This is from 2022, so... I don't know how close prices are on that now, but for instance, they're 30 cal, 106 grain, hollow point boat tail. You were looking around 42 per pound for $11 and 86 cents. That's pretty cheap. Get out of here. Yeah. That was 2022 prices, mind you, but I don't yeah. see them changing crazy amounts, but so I'm um, waiting for the new list to come out and I might have to call them up and, See if I can get it emailed to me by chance if they have it. Yeah, and I just if need to wanting, know what day I need to be sick. But if you want top of the line precision bullets, I wouldn't recommend that. No, for for plinking rounds, just the low plinking. cheap plinking rounds, absolutely is what the mm -hmm. outlet store is great for. But no, if you're wanting precision, just buy their off the shelf stuff. Or better. Or better, yeah. Mm -hmm. Christopher Sullivan said, thanks, guys, for taking time to answer my question, because he is in the show chat this evening. So, um, Paul, remember when Jeff Daniels asked about um, scales? He had the Gem Pro 250 and the Frankfurt Platinum Powder Scale, and he was kind of seeing the yeah. um, 
So he sent me some follow-up emails. He said, uh, the reason for asking is Gem Pro is acting wonky lately. It won't calibrate and it drifts off zero. But with weight left on, it doesn't seem to drift at all. They seem to weigh the same with my gram calibration weight. Um, I followed Paul's advice and got some Lyman check weights in this week. They seem, Those seem to be the same in both scales also. Should I just avoid the Gem Pro until I can upgrade to A&D? The Frankfurt seems extremely stable, just doesn't measure down as far as the Gem Pro and Green. Gem Pro and Greens. Is it normal for the Gem Pro to drift off zero? Should I not worry about it? Any advice with the extra info would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. Drifting is usually a problem with scales as far as temperature and um, airflow. Uh, so if you if it's abnormal um then stop using the the scale that's all i can tell you um and then go to the frankfurt and use that until you can improve your uh the quality of your scale um the gem pro 250 has always been a pretty good scale though and i don't know why it, it's drifting on you um uh fluorescent lights uh can play havoc with it um variations in temperature uh and uh airflow if you got a draft somewhere in there it can because it's so much more sensitive it can drift mm -hmm. so um that would be uh my uh my recommendation would be to one check you check to see if you have uh, a problem with uh, airflow and, and temperature change and where you're reloading um you know no air conditioners blowing around in there um and that kind of stuff um uh, you know um check to see uh you know what kind of wind current you have in there uh if you have any and if you don't have any and the scale is still drifting, sorry, guy, it's it's time to to let it go and buy a better scale. Paul Loud has what seems to be a valid question on screen. Yeah, he's he's saying that Gem Pro is sensitive to other electronics. They can be. Um, there, it's an older scale. It's an, it, I mean, they haven't been produced in, oh man, 10 years. Um, they may be sensitive. Who knows? I can't tell you cause I never, I played with one. Um, but I, uh, I went with A and D when, when, when I started, uh, upgrading scales and I've always, Kind of sat there with a and d scales to uh to to check and uh they uh they've always been uh some will drift but again i'm saying that uh the drift i've noticed is because of uh uh temperature or uh or wind or you know or air movement and just breathing yeah. on, a, on a scale can can cause it to uh drift Trenda, there's one on screen for you that you could you can uh, take care of Paul. <laughs> Paul, may you get indigestion. <laughs> That's what you get for car coming in late, loud. <laughs> So Jeff kind of responded. He said, "I got a get. I got Gem Pro 250 to calibrate. Finally, stop drifting is bad, but still drifts some. No moving air, from what I can tell." Okay. So where's where's he breathing? Yeah, quit breathing on it. Yep. So he says he thinks he's sticking with the Frankfurt until he gets the A and this A and D this summer. Yeah. And Paul, we are a tough crowd tonight. We always have been, you know, after you've been digging out for, from, you know, 12 inches of snow that you have. Oh, no, there. 22. 22, excuse Don't me. Don't short what? the man if he gets buried. 20, 22 inches of snow, 
and uh, I, I saw pictures of the snowblower tracks that going back and forth. So, uh, you know, and no power. And I'm sorry about the no power. That yeah. that that really hurts. That does. Suck. Suck. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, you know, five six gallons of gas, no big deal. Yep. The trucks worked right. Exactly. Yep. Cover on still drifts, Dan Jeff Daniels said. Well, if mm. it's drifting and the cover's on it, it Shoot ain't it. working. Shoot it and go on. <laughs> just, just go out there and and uh, buy an Andy, um, you know, 120i, and you're better off. Yep. Uh, you may want to yeah, check yeah. with Jump Pro and see if they've got a uh, recalibration uh, availability, though. You never know. So, yeah. But anyway, moving along. Guys, I hate to break to break this up, but uh, it's time for the for me to turn into a pumpkin. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Same. I'm gonna hop off too. I gotta get up early for work. Good night, Trenda. Good night, Gremlins. And bad influences. Dang right. <laughs> Speaking of bad influences, you need some Camarado. Some who? Camarado. Camarado. Look at this awesome camouflage. What the heck? Yeah, check that bad boy out. See that is kind of, is that dry wicking? Uh they got a whole bunch of stuff. Hmm. So spell that for me. C A M O R A D O dot com. Okay, I'll look it up tomorrow when I'm supposed to be working and surfing the internet. So, all right, night gents. They got all sorts of stuff. So, anyway, uh, so. Say goodbye to the same old bland camo designs. Camarado brings a fresh, cool edged camouflage designed not to just to function, but to turn heads. With Camarado, you're not just wearing camo, you're making a statement. Unlike traditional camo, Camarado is crafted for both performance and fashion. It's a perfect fusion of functionality and style, ensuring you look as good as you feel no matter the setting. So, swing over. Camarado, C A M O R A D O dot com. So. And uh, use code reload for a uh, discount at checkout. So. And if you are looking at us and you're seeing these awesome reloading podcast shirts that we're rocking. And, and you see us drinking out of our awesome reloading podcast tumblers and you say, hey. That's some pretty cool stuff. Where can I get that? Well, you can uh, click on uh, the link on the show notes, or you can go to the Reloading Podcast page on uh, Firearms Radio's homepage, and uh, you, or you can go to Southern Gals Crafts uh, page, and it's southerngalscrafts.myshopify.com slash collection slash reloading hyphen podcast hyphen merch is the full url so you can swing over there and check it out uh we've got the t-shirts we've got the tumblers we've got some sweatshirts and you know if you just want to antagonize your local atf agent we've got stuff for that too so um but uh yeah swing over check them out uh once again that's southern gales crafts uh they're making our merch now so our, our t-shirts and stuff so it looks really, they look really nice. They wear really well. This has been washed mm, 30 or 40 times, and it's still just fantastic. Yes, we have hoodies, Jeff. We have hoodies. So all of the clothing comes in either gray, white, or uh, olive drab. And uh, the tumbler comes in either the extruded powder like I have, the brass like Paul has, 
or the American flag like Jim has. So I don't remember what Nick and Ray have. I don't think Nick. Sure. I don't. I don't think Nick's ever showed his off. I don't use mine much. <laughs> well, then <laughs> you should a... keep it by your podcast computer, you putts. Well, eventually this is going to be a desktop down here. That'll be for editing. I'm thinking about putting a big screen TV here on the back here, like kind of like Todd from EP has. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Use the big still. screen as your monitor. Yep. So. <clears throat> And then we want to thank uh, Jake and Ryan over at Patriot Patch Company for being the long-term sponsor of the Reloading Podcast. This is this month's. It's awesome. Lovely Easter theme. Um, so here is the new patch of the month. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. Got a lovely little claymore, some pineapples that have been painted up like Easter eggs, and some uh, 40 Mike Mike uh, mortar shells that are also painted up very nicely. Sorry, I can't keep still. Uh, when you sign up to be a Patriot or a Patch of the Month Club member, you get the morale patch, the vinyl sticker, and the original drawing. If you just want to sign up to be a Patch of the Month Club member, you can swing over to patriotpatch.co, sign up there. Or if you want to sign up and be a Patch of the Month Club member and help the show out at the same time, you can swing over to the Firearms Radio Network page. Uh, da, 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 da. Hang on a second here. Which is firearmsradio.net. And then hit the drop down, go to the... Uh, Reloading podcast link, and then you will see the uh, support the show link. So, um, one thing to let you know is you do want to go to firearmsradio.net quite a bit because we are adding new shows. So, but you know, they, they come up with new stuff. So, all the time, Sean's adding stuff. So, um, but yeah, go check it out. Lots of good stuff on the network. Anybody got any shout outs? No. I would like to shout out to uh, Ray and Nick uh, okay. and Trenda for uh, hooking me up with gloves from Fat Show and a bag of swag. Got all sorts of sweet stickers and morale patches and stuff in here. Ooh, a keychain. So. Those are just all your extra ones, aren't they? <laughs> no, I told you that last day. I'm just grabbing everything I see. <laughs> well, uh, well zipper pulls in there. Is that a lens cleaner? Yes. There was some decently good stuff this year at some of the freebies. That's good. So. But also, uh, if anybody's interested in GunCon. I just looked. There are still tickets available, which kind of shocks yeah. me. We're two weeks well, past release. They uh, they have more tickets available this year. Oh, that's true. So yeah. they expanded so. this one this big time. Yeah. But. Um, yes, the tickets are more. They're fifty this year. However, um, you get a T-shirt, and you figure the T-shirt's got to be at least fifteen twenty bucks. Yep. Um, and you get uh, free lunch, and trust me, they the aren't going to jip on. Yeah, they they won't jip on food trucks. That's for sure. That's a there. Don't you get the, a personalized the, name badge or something, something like that? Yeah, the food trucks are amazing. I, I'm just absolutely amazing. So, um, so that's guncon.net. Um, yeah, swing over, check it out. Uh, it's it's a blast. Uh, you get to get inside Brownells. Uh, inside the warehouse and stuff. A um, lot of good content. Um, you actually get to, you know, talk to the vendors that are there. And giveaways. Um, there are firearms, suppressors, 
and other thing, other awesome things that are given away every year. So and these are probably some of your best odds to give win a giveaway. Yeah, compared to Shot Show and some of these other big events. Because uh, some of the people don't stay. The, the the key to the giveaway is you have to stay. Uh, GunCon is at Brownells in Grinnell, Iowa, June 29th. Um, the 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 key with it is you have to stay while they're doing the drawings. A lot of people don't. They leave because the drawings are done at the end of the day. Um, and so a, a lot of times they're going to dry a draw a couple of times because the first person is not there. So, and you get to pick what you're going to put your, your tickets in for. So it's not like, a, you know, so, so what, uh, a lot of people, what, what, uh, one of the things is done is you wait till, you know, five, six o'clock and you walk around and you see what buckets have very little tickets in and you throw your tickets in there and increase your chances and stuff. So, but so, yeah. yeah. So there, uh, make sure you check that out. Several YouTube personalities would be there, so meet them. Yeah, if you go to guncon.net, they've got the full list there. Um, Is Sean going to be there this year? Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, where'd that go? Let's see. Panel, panel, panel. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, Frankfurt Arsenal is doing a reloading seminar as well. So they've got an off grid communications seminar, uh, a, a Second Amendment live stream panel, a next gen uh, social media uh, live stream panel. Um, and then they've got the elite live stream panel, which is the one that Sean's on. Um, so. I'm excited to see who's there. Do you see who's going to be there? The old member of the gun collective? Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Yep. Yeah. He hasn't been That's Adam years. Kraut, for those of you who don't know, who uh, uh, is now uh, doing a lot of good work with uh, Second Amendment Foundation. So, but yeah, definitely. Uh, Yeah, and then Jared from Guns and Gadgets will be there. So yeah, you got a you got a good group of yep. big namers. So I think I have a full list. Give me just a second here. Stop it. Come on. You guys are so quiet. <laughs> you could say something, you know. Race is on, Jesse. Who finds it first? Well, I got the list right here. I didn't know if the Mike had a different list or what list no. you got. I'm on the website. You got so the main I'm assuming this will be the elite panel, is what I'll assume. Maybe this could be multiple panels, though. So you got VSO VSO Gun Channel. Yep. Uh, Sean from Dangerous Freedom. Tactical Santini. I've never heard of him. Uh, Weapon Vault. Tactical Advisor. Luke. Ceciri, Cicino. Got Gamma. Travis White. Deanna Mueller. Eric Pratt will be there. Adam Kraut. Arm Scholar. Of course, John Patton. Uh, legally Armed American, uh, Tactical Toolbox, Mr. Guns and Gear, Jared from Guns and Gadgets, Kevin Dixie, and Tactical Considerations. So, and who knows, there might be more. Of course, you, you'll you have more YouTube guys there for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there'll be, you know, there's always a couple of others that show up. So You'll probably have Honest Outlaw because he's based out of Iowa. Yep. So... 
But yeah, so uh, you know, if you got a ch if you got time, check it out. Guncon.net. It's definitely awesome. Definitely worth it. So. All right, gang. On that note, uh, thanks to everybody that tunes in live and joins in on the chat. Thanks to everybody that uh, listens to the downloaded shows. Thanks to everybody that joins us in Discord and Facebook group and Facebook page and MeWe and uh, Signal. Uh, you know, a lot of different ways to get a hold of us. So, and uh, you know, just uh, make sure. Make sure you're uh, sharing. If you have questions, you have complaints, uh, reloadingpodcastgmail.com. You can text us or send us a, uh, leave us a voicemail, 608-467-0308. And like I said, we're on all sorts of social media. So Instagram, I forgot to mention. And on that note, keep your brass shiny. Jump on the mill soap short bus. You need some shoot and reload when they're young. Grandpa said, don't listen to your mama. Violence does solve problems. Protect the Second Amendment. Uh, get involved locally, nationally. Uh, call your elected representatives. And more importantly, if you're struggling or you know somebody who's struggling, 1-800-273-8255. Um, or 988 from a cellular device. Reach out. Uh, get the ball rolling uh, and getting you some mental health help. It's important. So, thanks everyone. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs>